Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss on JavaScript, HTML and CSS just in a single video. So if you can remember, we have uh, created a repository that uh, been downloaded into our local machine in the past videos. So if you haven't seen that video, you can just uh, click on the tab that is popping up in the link up above so that you can go back to it. So this is where we store our own repository from the internet and this is, this is going to serve as a project file or folder that is going to hold all the dependent and related file to our projects. So we can just go ahead and open this in our terminal. So uh, not, not terminal, text editor. The text editor of my choice in this project is Visual Code Studio. You can as well use Atom and other uh, text editor like uh, Sublime and all that. So I will open it inside the Visual Code Studio so that we will just keep on building on the past experience. So in today we will uh, have a feel of JavaScript, a little test of CSS, and see how the JavaScript is powerful enough to make some changes to our pages. Hopefully, if you follow me from this point up to the end of the video, I think we are going to drive some value home. So now, uh, this is the structure as it is being left up inside our own file. So when you are going to create any project, maybe there will be a tendency that you have. Uh, to rely upon some other things like code like pictures and even the style so you will create a different directory for everything for example if this page is going to link to a another page which is fresh from this one in our project we need to create that separate page so this page is our home page and we want to link it to some other page so now we can create a folder that is going to contain all the markup that is uh, a structure for the page so there is something that i want you to know is that uh, whenever you are trying to pass a page inside a browser, a browser will build something that is internal to itself that is going to be served as an interface for other components outside its environment to interact with all the objects that are uh, being implemented or that are being rendered by it. So, uh, if you can remember, we say the page is entirely a document, and a document that is beginning with doc type HTML is literally. A HTML5 uh, file that is uh, being rendered by the browser. So when you click on this uh, doc type, it is something that is still in the browser. You are going to pass onto its environment something that is written in markup language, a markup language that is uh, preparably for structuring the component and all the elements that are going to be presented to the user whenever the browser pairs up the page. So we have a HTML. A HTML is the broader part, which is the super parent of the uh, components. Uh, if you come here, for example, if I tap on here, you will see that there is a sheet between this HTML and this clause in HTML. It, will, it is showing us that everything that the browser is going to uh, present to a user is enclosed in this two tab, which is a parent node, which is a grandparent node in this case. For example, uh, it, has a it has a child, which is head. When you click on this head, you will see that there is a uh, accompanying uh, head tag, which is uh, beginning with a slash. That is another child of the uh, document so which is a uh, head that is holding all the metadata for the page for example the the, the name is fitting because uh, the page is going to be self-aware of it itself what is uh, being needed for it to do as in this example there is a child inside the head element which is title a title for the home page uh, this is what going to be uh, written over the browser's uh, title bar so you see that the page know that i have an information for myself that whenever i'm trying to load this page the title bar should be written home page if i change this to something else that is what is going to be presented over the browser's title bar so it is uh, also even being closed by the uh, title i know there are so many resources that uh, people have been uh, looking at to see uh, what is uh, entailed by the element and tag so if you come here and click so let's say we have body when you click body you will see the shape this is all the component that is inside the body or actually here the body contains uh, three children we have uh, h1 for holding the title of the page uh, hello I mean the heading and also we have P which is a paragraph tag we specify that uh, in this place the browser should 
present a paragraph and also another paragraph that is being enclosed. This is what is called the DOM. So the DOM is created using the element that have been rendered by the browser and these are the DOMs that are going to be used by JavaScript at the uh, cascading style sheet to interact with the page cascading for giving a presentation format like uh, like styling coloring and all the spaces around the page and uh, javascript for asking of event for example when something is clicked on when the browser finishes loading when there is a calculation on some parts and when even there is a change that we want to uh, change something for example if we want to remove this uh, paragraph javascript can do that so uh, let's now go ahead and create another folder <clears throat> inside our own main folder so by right clicking and creating this new folder choosing this new folder icon we will give the uh, folder a name called pages so this is literally going to hold some additional pages that we are going to create in the future and again we need to uh, create another folder by uh, that is going to create uh, to hold all the styling because if we want different pages we will have a style for the men's uh, interface if we want to inherit that style for different pages so we need to create the css folder to hold all the styling for the different pages or even a single file to hold the style for the entire web structure so again we have uh another folder that is going to hold our javascript so we can call it a js folder so now we have uh, been building up inside the uh, our environment that is we created three folders so uh, let's now uh, make use of css to at least give something uh, a test on the page for example uh, let's go back to the uh, browser and test what is going to be uh, what our page is going to look like so now when i right click here i'll just copy the path let me copy the path and go to the chrome browser when i go to the chrome browser uh, as soon as it loads i type inside the uh, address bar the code that is going to add uh, the link to my page so now uh, let me choose the user part. okay 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 so i have copied the path to the web page remember we are developing on a local machine so i think uh there is no issue with that there is yellow yeah that is what we are going what we are expecting to see hello nida so we want to add some styling to this page so that is where css comes in so now let me create a css file to style this page a little so we can go ahead inside our editor go to css folder and create a new file and remember if you create a file let let's say uh we call it main like say main we are going to style the main page like this main.css that is the extension that is referring to our system that uh this file should be written in css language so now uh, with that said let me uh, start writing something so i said that whenever the browser is trying to render a page it is going to create a structure that is holding the elements that is being presented by it so now what uh, do you think we have uh, the, the the thing that a browser can render to a user is enclosed inside a body so let me come here and write let's say body this is a body tag and we give it a style like say uh, we can give it a background color let's say bg you see background now right now is uh, blank so let me give it a uh, some some color so that we can uh, change some style so this is the main work of css so i choose the background so now i can even give uh, the file or the the main in the entire body some padding so let me say uh padding okay let me say padding top let me add some percentage let's say padding top i will not use percentage let me use pixels let me use pixels it is zero pixels right now so i will use uh let's say five pixel and i will say uh let's say border nope i will say border 
So these are all the cells that you can do, which uh, I can say a border should be uh, in pixel. Let's say uh, I will have a border that is two pixel. I will have a border that is two pixel. So let me save and go back to the browser. Now, we have to link this uh, style to our page. That is where uh, the head tag is going to be more important to our uh, pages. So now, come here, because we said that head is a self-aware of what is going to be required by the browser. So we have a specific tag for that. To reference to a file that is going to style our page, we need to use a link tab. So a link tab is going to uh, tell the browser what type of element that is going to be used for that particular styling. So we said a resource element using this attribute and we will say resource element should be style sheet. Yes, should be style sheet. And what is the source? Where can we uh, import that styling? So we will say SRC is another name for the uh, SRC is another name for the location that you are going to reference where we have a folder inside in this uh, inside of this main directory which is called css and we can go ahead and create you see even the editor has know that there is something main.css that we can reference and so i choose that file then i tap enter for uh for for us to go to the browser now to see is uh being there so this is our default page without any styling so let me refresh again let me refresh all right so the style hasn't been implemented let me go to the uh, styling and see what is uh, left all right background is this uh, all right all right so, all right so there is something that is missing inside the uh resource element so the resource element there is a uh, it is not source uh, source is for javascript uh, tag so we have a uh, header reference that is href in short all right so i reference this file that is the mistake that we have made in and we come here and see let's see refresh the page as you can see now the style has been implemented to our page and we want to uh, change the size of this header element let's go back there and go to the styling of the css uh, go to the style file uh, choose another choose another thing that is uh, h1 for example specific to our page we have a heading that is saying hello nida so we use this uh, we use this by saying let the let the color of the text for example let the color of the text be blue let's say blue yeah let the color be blue when it is now blue and let's change the size or not the size let's change the styling so we will have a font face all right we have font face or font style all right so we have a font the type of font right now is sans serif so we want to change it into let's say times new roman not times new roman let it be let it be default sans serif sans serif i want to change uh we want to have uh, some quick uh, refresher that is why make it times times so right so i have the specific font right now so after that let us test because we will be uh, testing all the uh, necessary thing that you are going to add before we post it onto the uh, windows uh, onto the server so you can see now the styling is being applied to the uh, to the heading so this this is the work of a css file as you can see there are so many things that you can do so the the job of javascript is that uh, javascript is going to give our page life that is a behavior so since css file can have access to what is uh, all intel is the page so let's create some page again inside our pages for example uh, we have a pages folder let's go ahead and create a new file a new file that is a html file that we are going to reference from our own home page 
uh, so that we can see some action of JavaScript inside that file. So what we can do with JavaScript actually is writing statements, you know, doing something over and over again that is uh, looping and we can also uh, do something specifically based on some condition that is if condition. So uh, there are so many things that we can do. So let's give this uh, file name calculation, for example, calculation dot html don't forget to write the extension so that the <clears throat> the editor will help you uh, append all, all the necessary information that you might have so it is also a html element we can directly copy all this we copy that go to the new file which is calculation and paste that so uh we no longer need this uh, styling but we can keep the we can keep the link so that because it is a main styling that we want uh, this page is going to inherit all the styling that is being implemented in our in, implemented in our first page so now let's change the title if we change the title to say calculate calculate so now we change the title and save the change now i will change this hello need that to our calculation our calculation and then come down and remove all this stuff all right so we save so if we go back we can copy the directory and open it inside the browser for example copy the pass uh, let's go there onto the browser and uh, create a new tab so using that link we paste it and we implement it calculation is our uh, calculation is now having no any styling so uh, do you know the reason we are one folder ahead of the link that we are being specified so let's go back to the editor i said that uh, we created some uh, folder we created some folder which is pages which is in the same directory as uh, a CSS uh, folder so now we need to first of all move out of this uh, inner directory by saying let's see like this you see now we have a choice we can reference to this and it is already there and we can reference to the main CSS so this two dot meaning that change directory directly from here one step above and go inside the next directory which is a folder next to it or in the in the same uh, in the same depth as it so that we can uh, implement what we want to implement so I save these changes go back to the new tab in our calculate page and refresh when I refresh as you can see I have something here and calculate our calculation is now changing the form because it is in head one so let's say uh, we change the header for this to give it some different data. you know heading is uh, two level uh, is up to six level this is the largest possible heading that you might have using the HTML let me for example choose h3 and come here and use h3 so when when I go there and change you will see that blue will not exist you see now there is no any uh, blue coloration over my heading so uh, you can see that cascading style this is a way that you can minimize uh, how many code that you are going to write whenever you are trying to uh, develop a web application you can divide your page and make them use the same styling so that you minimize the time and code uh, lines that you are going to write so uh, after that we are now we are now going to go back to our editor so we are now back on our editor we change back the heading and now we just come here make it header one right so there is something called a script tag there is so many ways that you can uh, write a script and make uh, the page you make use of them and what uh, you are going to do with uh, the javascript uh, in the first place javascript as i said can be used for writing a statement and that statement will be looked up whenever the browser is loading the page that is containing that script tag 
and if there is an error so the browser will notify that there is an error in the script so let's quickly uh, use the script tag right now and inside of which uh, we will just write some basic calculation I want to close this script so in between this script there here is what we are going to write our javascript code we said that whatever javascript is going to uh is going to work upon uh maybe uh, either variables that is some data in, uh, that is some data placed inside something called variable so uh whenever you have a var whenever you have a var or you have something let or you have something const all this are a way of a programmer to tell the javascript compiler that or interpreter that uh, this the next thing that is going to follow is a named location to store something so for example if i use var for example i i say it uh, let me uh, start with lowercase because i will come to, uh, to talk about that a little balance balance maybe i am not using any reserve word there are some some things that are called reserve word whenever you are trying to had caught something that is not uh that is not being meant to use the library that javascript is uh, aware of so you need to specifically uh, find a word that is not going to conflict with uh, the reserve word for java so this var is saying that we are going to place something inside a variable a location called balance and what that thing might be it will be uh, let's say 100.23 so this is uh, a location holding a floating point number saying uh, 123 in java script this is called a statement so a statement here is a statement we assign a value of 100.23 onto a variable called balance so we have what we call a declaration here so this is declaration uh, or variable declaration per se variable declaration and we have this let this also is another way of uh, saying that uh, place something inside something so we will have this something uh, we will call this uh, for example count so we have a count here count so this variable count is going to hold something that is five so the same as above but in this time uh, we have different type of numbers here uh, we have a uh, integer number that is uh, without a decimal point any number without a decimal point is called an integer and some number that is uh, with a decimal point as you know is uh, called floating point number and again we will have some constant here a constant saying that uh, we will have something like say uh, underscore msg or we can call it message so uh, you can begin a variable declaration using uh, something uh, underscore or dollar sign because uh, uh, javascript will allow that so if there is a uh, if you fear that there is a reserve word and you want to make use of it you can just uh, prepend it with using this uh, underscore or dollar sign but uh, prepending it with underscore is more prepared way so now let's give a message something like say uh, new new balance so the difference between uh, the other two variable declaration and this one this new balance is not is never going to change whenever you want to reassign additional value to it for example if uh, somebody come and say new balance when he try to uh, change that value the compiler or interpreter will warn him that this uh, this value is already been assigned let me try and see so uh, if i come here or oh, before we try that we need to test that in the browser so we save the change and we go back to our on file uh, page by refreshing we will not see anything because uh, 
the only change that we revert is what is being displayed we can test that for uh, looking at a developer tool here when you come to more tool and you call you choose developer tool <clears throat> sorry you will have to uh, see what is all entailed by the page so uh, let me come to the source use this one and there is no issue let me open the console so when you open the console that is where you will see all the variables that you declared so remember we have declared some other variable in our uh, in our file we have balance let me go and ask the console what is the balance what is the value being set in the balance so i will just type here balance when i type here and hit enter you will see that no i use some reserve word i will have to say balance i will have to say balance so this is my balance variable as you can see so when i uh, choose it and hit enter so they said that uh balance is not defined at this moment so let's go back and see what is the problem you see i have a mistake here i said balance while in the declaration i used bla so i used to i have to add a right here and save the page go back so make sure that when you are uh, creating a variable be specific whenever you are specific you will not have issues like this so that is the essence of testing and seeing what is going to happen in in your code so before you even start thinking about deploying it somewhere so now i choose the balance hit it i did not refresh the page so refresh the page take balance all right as you can see before i even finish uh before i even finish uh typing there is 100 displaying there you see 100.23 now javascript can be uh, implemented what if i want to bring out that balance so i will have two ways there is uh, something that is being uh that is reserved to the javascript called uh, function that library function you can make use of to uh, create some behavior to a page for example i can present an alert whenever i load this page to say that the balance that i have is 100.23 so how can i go about doing about that so let me uh, use alerts for example this is a reserve function for the javascript and we'll say that uh, alert is going to describe to display a message a message we have already declared something which is called a message we can choose that and we can uh, concatenate that uh, message with the balance that we have already uh, declared so when i say that so i will say new balance is equals to the balance and and the uh, the statement using the semicolon so uh, remember whenever you are ending a statement you are going to just uh, end it with the semicolon so when you save the page go back onto the browser and say refresh you will see an alert saying uh, new balance 100.23 so we have a reserve function to do that what if we want to manipulate this so if we want to manipulate this we can go back here uh, at least you can do so many things i think i will do i will just uh leave this to the gtop repository that i've already created remember if you haven't seen how you can download this uh tutorial and all that uh, i'm doing uh, you can go for free and download it over the uh github account that i will leave the link in the description of this video or just click on the link above that is showing to the uh to the directing you to the uh, other video so that you will have a sense of what we are heading to so i can manipulate this using this when you come here and inside this uh curly brace okay sorry parenthesis i want to say parenthesis so i have an alert that is taking an argument an argument of message concatenated to another argument uh uh with of balance is called uh is called uh function so this function literally before it can work it needs some argument when it's it's pass a correct argument it is going to do uh what is the expected to be uh needed behavior so come here and write uh balance let's say minus 
time so before the user even load the browser so uh, the balance is going to be deducted by javascript and come here uh, after i save i'll just go to calculate let me close this developer and i will reload the page as you can see balance is now 90.23 this is a power of javascript you can run it inside a browser but uh, specifically since we have a file that is being specific to run to run our codes we need a way to separate our javascript from all the code that is uh, that is uh, being used by the pages uh, at least you can have javascript for different pages like this page calculation will depend on it is one file for javascript and uh, the main page for it is on file for javascript so now go back when we go back let's cut all this from this to this i cut that go to the main file close the css here so i have a js file inside of which i'm going to create a new file and call it calculate for example calcul calculate dot js so the js extension is uh, referring that we are trying to create a javascript file and we all those uh, components that we have already uh, implemented without using that secret tags because this file has no use to that secret uh, secret tags so let's go back to save the changes uh, that we made to our page control s and let's change this secret for example control x come here i'll just paste here I want them to be aligned. So, so if I have this, I will say that a script should reference to the file because now it is part of our heading. You can see that I have this. I have uh, show you how you can uh, write the code inside the body of your HTML, which is somehow a bad idea. But you can do a little when there is no need for much computation and much privacy. You can do that, but uh, preferably this is the way that is most efficient because when you have a lot of JavaScript, maybe the page is not is going to work efficiently. But if you place it inside the head, the work uh, the page will work more efficiently right now so let me uh, call this a source by saying go to the next folder when you come out of this go to the JS folder and make use of the calculate.js so this is the JavaScript file that I will be using and let's say uh, let's try and test that to see if the file uh, have so let me save this code. Go back. Okay, let me refresh. You see, the same behavior has been applied. So this is the way that you can interact with your page. So let's say we want, we don't want the alerts. If we can come here in the developer tool, come to the developer tool if you want to test things on the browser without even uh, closing and doing things like see so let me come here and see balance for example minus 20 remember uh, whenever you run a function if the variable is not going to store a new value that the function has changed it to so the value is not longer uh, there so whenever you want something to be static make sure after you use the function reduce that uh, value to uh, to what you want the value to remain so now let me minus 20 there you see now i have 80 minus 20 so now let's go back to where we have so uh, let me uh, first of all uh, make the calculation but to recap we have done something uh, at least uh, we know where to link some file where to store every individual part of the project and how to uh, do some declaration using javascript this is a very brief uh, discussion and uh, in this we have achieved something at least we know what is statement this is a statement every line here is a statement and 
a statement of the same kind per se because we are declaring a variable in each of the lines here so after declaration we have arithmetic that we can conduct on our own uh, things and we know that javascript is powerful enough to change whatever is presented to the user inside a browser so now let's just jump uh, a little deeper by uh, having a notion of function in th inside of which we are going to uh, see so many things that are related to that to javascript uh, to javascript sorry so now we have some things that are special to javascript called function a function uh, any line starting with a keyword function is going to declare a function whether anonymous or named function we will come to anonymous in a bit so now let us uh, call the function here the same as our file calculates for example we have a calculate option what this option will do it's that it is going to manipulate variables or data that is stored in our uh, javascript to be presented over the internet for example or to the user for example uh, let's say this balance has come to us using a database from a bank and also uh, we have a minimum of five count of withdrawal that a customer uh, presented with this balance can do and then this message is going to show uh, after the execution what is the new balance so uh, we have some idea of what this uh, simple example is going to do right now uh, after the name of the function in the declaration of function you need to follow a function with parenthesis maybe this function can take an argument that is to tell the function uh, how to manipulate things but for now let's just uh, jump uh, to the very default one this is a default function that is not going to return anything so uh, if a function is going to return a value it will end with a return value so uh, that will be also discussed in a bit so because we want to manipulate things let's say we need to present a user that after some certain amount of the balance has been deducted this is what he has so be to do that we'll just uh, create a variable local to this function uh, when this function is existed any variable that is declared here it is not going to be uh, visible to any part of the uh, code so now we will create this uh, new balance variable to tell the user that we have something deducted from his balance and store it in this new balance variable right so new balance will be assigned a value which is coming from the competition so the competition is going to be arithmetic calculation because java can do arithmetic calculation comparison operation uh, a bit about that again and it can also use a boolean expression so we have all uh, the way to go so let me uh, first of all reduce the initial balance that we have by let's say 50 uh -huh. so we have 50 so now uh, the new balance we are going to get is going to be 50.23 uh, some leading zeros ahead so but how can we go about presenting to the user that uh, value which has been deducted to him so we will say that uh, instead of pre, uh, presenting the new balance or the old balance we will say document that write another reserve uh, function coming with javascript so we have write document is an object and it has a method called write saying that javascript is telling browser write to the document what is going to come inside my parenthesis so this is the argument that i'm going to pass to the parenthesis but we know we have a message so we will have a message let's see uh, since we have that message to so we reduce our uh, ourselves some uh, coding and we can add this uh, space to be to get it a bit uh, readable and now we pass the new balance inside this function all right new balance so this is the value that is going to be written but where is it going to be written and how uh, the browser will know when to present this so javascript will wait for the browser first of all to finish loading all the content that is uh, responsible for managing the user interaction so after that we come down here we have some uh, other inbuilt function which is called window uh, 
object so this is an object that is having an overall knowledge about the window what is happening around the interaction user is making and the data that is uh, supplied within the, the window so after this function is called we need the a lot so that is a lot when the document has finished loaded so we will just assign what is going to be performed by using an assignment operator here to call this calculate function so we say that when everything has finished loading onto the browser go ahead and calculate this these things but there is no anywhere that we can you know produce this change so let me at get some so we have document that right that will take care of, of that so let's go to the browser and refresh when i refresh all right so now the browser has presented but changed the property of the page because this is now the charge that is being shipped from the browser to the database and what what we are expecting is that our message the constant variable is here and the deduction process has taken place correctly and then uh, presented to the user but we don't want this behavior we know that javascript is powerful enough to change whatever is presented to the user by the browser so let's come here instead of document.write to say we need to declare a variable that is going to look for an element inside our uh, in, inside of our page so that we can change that element so let's go back to the calculation page because it is the one that we are most interested of so as you can see we have a heading here which is our calculation so we want to change this calculation into something or the result of the computation that javascript had done so let me first of all uh give an id so to specify something on a page you need to give it an id so that it will be referenced more correctly by any other api interacting with your page so now uh, i am going to give it an id attribute and that id will be assigned let's say one so this is the first element with an id one to our page you'll see how we can manipulate this dom that is the one uh, important aspect of writing code with javascript you can even create something that is not here so let's come here and say let h1 this is just a variable name be assigned when we assign this variable we need to take a look of all what we have inside our document so we need this document object document.get there is a method for retrieving whatever we we have in the page but we have the most prepared one which is element by id as you can remember i write an id which is id number one for our particular element of interest here this that is one so i'm looking for h1 so that i can change its value using the calculation that javascript has finished doing right now so we can say that since this uh, value is going this uh, variable is going to hold an object that object must have a property so let's now come and say get the property of this object which is h1 which property we want to change right now we want to automatically change the text into the number of the uh, value we get after calculation so we say h1 dot inner html should be assigned to new value but that is new balance so instead of uh, writing everything down here so i come here instead of that i come here i cut everything and paste it here because this is the operation that we are most interested in so i will just you see i will just comment this out this is a comment as i uh, as i explained earlier so now we no longer require this functionality i comment it out and now now go back to the page so after that i refresh the page as you can see now the heading has changed and it has uh, taken the intrinsic blue color of the style that we have in our css so this is how you can you can change things in a javascript using javascript but this is not saying that the value of the previous balance the old balance is uh, static so uh, if we want that to persist we need to at least 
uh, ship this new balance onto a database that is holding the user balance so all right so now we need to explore some more additional feature of javascript what you can do with javascript so we think that you can group a functionality and execute it uh, using a simple line by calling the function so we created a function use an inbuilt function to assign new value to a variable and change the 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 thing that are already present on our page so now we have something that we can use also like condition when something is going to be performed based on condition so uh that's those kind of uh, statement are called conditional statement they are of a form that if something happens so so let's say we have a variable called uh, balance for example since it is a global variable a global variable is a variable that can be used uh, anywhere in the code uh, in the uh, in the file so since we have balance as a, a global variable we let's check uh, test if it is less than 100 to see uh, what is going to happen we can do that uh, inside our uh, inside our uh, local function so we can cut this go to this place since we have created that so we will say if all right it's Charles I paste it if balance for example is let's say greater than 50 as we have reduced 50 and we are left with 50.23 so let's append the child or let's append the inner html element to have this original value okay control x and we say let it print the value and else for example if the value is less than what we are referencing right here we can see uh, in a HTML element to have uh, for example a new message to say zero balance or low balance low so now or we can uh, make it more uh, bubbles by saying lower than lower balance for example so this is not uh, any this is not in any way a variable name but a string that is going to be appended so don't be confused by by using the same name uh, this is enclosed in different uh, parts as the javascript is going to say that so uh, first of all we ask javascript to test if the value after deducing 50 is greater than 50 then we append the balance and if else it is not so we are going to be left with uh, something uh, presenting as lower so let's refresh our browser so new balance is 100 let's go back there uh, the balance is equal to all right so we are now referencing the older balance of forget about that let's say we have uh, we don't have this uh, global variable this is an issue when you have a global variable it will be accessed uh, by the uh, by the probe uh, by the program entirely so now let me come here and say new balance is let's say 100.23 sorry 0.23 minus 50 so we are now referencing this new balance to append it to the again the new balance that we have and also here we change that because we are referencing to the older variable so now we need we are left with the uh, new variable no no this is new balance okay new balance so i have been using ne instead so let me correct that new i want new new new, new. so new balance so let's start, uh, let us test to see if our change is taken. So refresh. Uh, right, so our calculation, there is something, uh, right? There is something we have to check in the developer. This is the power of developer tool that you can use to keep iterating on what you want to achieve using the uh, script language like JavaScript. So uh, we are now opening the console.
So you see balance is not defined because there is on line H there is reference to balance which we did not have. We comment out uh, what is already there. So where is line H? You see we have balance. So this is the new balance that we want to be referencing to. So you can see that we mess off. So I change that, correct it and save it. So we load the versions. We no longer have a point, uh, have a warning. You see, new balance is 50.23. So now go ahead and reduce it to less than uh, 50 and see what is going to happen. So let's say uh, new balance is 100 and we reduce it to by 70, for example. We reduce it by 70, control S. So go back, refresh. So you see our message is saying a new a new balance is lower balance that is 30 point this so you have a lower balance so that uh, the browser uh, the JavaScript has done a calculation so this is part of the condition that is a statement that is executed based on something that is happening in the browser and we have something left out this is a comparison operation we have additional operation that is uh, arithmetic operation uh, plus that is addition subtraction multiplication and all that so we can do a bunch of these uh, things and we have comparison operation where we use this uh, the the what is return here is the true uh, is the false value of this that is why uh, this else condition is been taken and therefore we have this message being printed based on the uh, falsely return value of the comparison operation that is a boolean comparison operation all right so let's go back to see what we can add so in case you did not understand what i am going to i will leave the link to the repository that i'm working right now so that you can uh, download it and play around with it and if you drive any value maybe i'm just going to uh, not much, take much of your time maybe we'll meet later in another tutorial thank you for watching me